Look, I'm not sure how we got here, but Christmas is less than two weeks away and I have yet to put out a Christmas shopping guide like I do every year. So, since I'm on lunch break from work and we're running out of time just in every imaginable way, I'm quickly gonna go over five stocking stuffers and 10 gifts that I think would be great for this Christmas. And in the essence of time, I'm gonna give like a 10 second pitch for each one of these games. We're gonna start with five stocking stuffer games. First one we've got is Tussie Mussie. It's a small card game about handing out flowers to each other and creating bouquets to make the most amount of points that you possibly can. It's a very pretty game, it's uh, compact, you can take it anywhere, and it is a whole lot of fun. Next we've got Deep Sea Adventure, which is a much bigger game than the box would lead you to believe. It's a 30 minute game that can play up to six players where you are racing down to the bottom of the ocean to pick up treasure while you're sharing oxygen. So it's got a real sort of tension to it that you wouldn't expect from something this small. Cracker Lack and Salad is a game where you are playing cards and you're saying the fruit or vegetable that's on the card. As simple as that sounds, there's a lot more to it in, it's a real tongue twister of a game where you have to say what you've set down unless it's the exact same that someone else has set down or there's been a different rule. So you have to tell the truth unless you can't. Uh, kind of hard to explain, but a very, very easy, frustrating and quick game to play that I really enjoy. Trophies is a game that I just did a review on. If you'd like to take a look at it, go for it. But essentially it's a party game that you can stand up and play with the entire room. You hold up a card that has a letter on it and you read a category from the back. The first person to shout out an answer that matches that category uh, and the word starts with the letter that you're holding up gets that card. Whoever has the most wins. A really fun game. The last stocking stuffer game, which barely fit, is Medium. It essentially takes the game of Jinx and puts it into a game where you are trying to say the exact same word as someone else. Both players set down a word and then you have to say the word that you think connects those two words at the same time. You play with a big group of people and the two people that score the most points between them have the best connection, wins the game. Moving on to games that are uh, anywhere from slightly bigger to a lot bigger, we're gonna go with Skull. Skull is a bluffing, gambling-esque game where you are uh, trying to outbid someone. It's a combination of like liar's dice or fluff in a durable, really cool looking box. And it's a game that is very easy to teach and is a whole lot of fun that I do highly, highly recommend. Crusaders Thy Will Be Done is a game that has you expanding across a map, uh, trying to build influence. And it sounds kind of boring when I put it that way, but the game is very slick and quick. It plays what, like 45 to 60 minutes. And that's accurate for two to four players. You build up this engine, you've got action points and it's a game that looks and has a feel of a heavier game without actually having the mechanics or anything to bog it down that you would normally expect from like a war game. On tour, you're rolling dice and you are creating a tour route for your band. It's a roll and write game, which means that you roll the dice and you decide where you're going to put the number on this particular board uh, with cards dictating where exactly that can be. It's a very fun game that is easy to teach but has a difficult to crunch puzzle where you're trying to maximize your uh, your movements. Just One was a really popular word game last year. It's a cooperative game where you're all playing on the same team. Somebody picks a word that they can't see themselves and everyone else writes down a one word clue. The clue givers compare their notes and if anybody put the exact same clue, they can't show that one. The person that is guessing then turns around, sees what clues are left and has to decide what they think is the hidden word. This is one I've been waiting for the retail release of for a long time, but Fantastic Factories is an engine building game where you've got lots of cards and lots of lots of lots of pretty dice and you roll them and you use those dice to create the best engine that you possibly can either gathering resources building factories uh, any number of things and it's just all about maximizing your opportunities qe has blown me away is probably my favorite bidding game in this game you are bidding on companies uh, your governments in the 2008 financial crisis you're bidding on company tiles. And the kicker is that there's no amount of money that you can't bid. As much as you can write down on your little checkbook, you can spend. But if you're the player that spends the most money at the end of the game, you automatically lose. Everyone else scores the points, the one with the most wins. Uh, 12 seconds till I have to start again. Let's go ahead and go with Imhotep. Imhotep is a game where you are a builder in Egypt and you've got a whole bunch of big chunky blocks and you're building pyramids, tombs, obelisks, all kinds of fun stuff. You've got fancy boats that you're sending across the sea, or I guess the Nile. And it's a very easy game to teach. It looks really, really cool on the table and it gives you a lot of decisions to make, uh, a whole lot of options here. And it is one that I think really is well worth looking into. Next up is Mars Open. Again, I talked about this on my last list, but it is tabletop golf. You essentially set up a 
frisbee golf course because the box is full of obstacles and little fancy paper things that you flick that uh, you use as golf balls. Uh, it's a whole lot of fun. You can set it up on any table and you can play with a whole bunch of, oh, how many people play this? This one came with 10, so you can play up to 10 players. Camel Up is a game that I think is great for just about anyone. This one comes with a pop-up board and a plastic pyramid. The gist of it is that there are a whole bunch of camels racing and you're trying to bet on which one is going to come in first, which one's gonna come in last, and which one you think is going to win a particular round. You keep playing rounds until a camel wins the race and then you count up points. Whoever has the most points wins the game. And one of, if not my absolute favorite game this year is Wingspan. This is a game about bird watching and as exciting as that sounds, it's uh, even doubly so. Players are trying to attract birds into their aviary, into their uh, player board, and there's uh, just hundreds of beautifully illustrated cards with facts about the types of birds. You attract them by using different types of food, different types of environment. Uh, it's a really cool thematic pretty game to put on the table that is an absolute blast to play. So there you have it, 15 games that I think would make fantastic gifts for just about anyone on your shopping list. I have to get back to work now, which means I have to change out of this turtleneck. Um, so yeah, Merry Christmas. Thank you for watching.